The history of supercomputing goes back to the early 1920s in the United States with the IBM tabulators at Columbia University and a series of computers at Control Data Corporation, designed by Seymour Cray to use innovative designs and parallelism to achieve superior computational peak performance. The CDC 6600, released in 1964, is generally considered the first supercomputer. While the supercomputers of the 1980s used only a few processors, in the 1990s, machines with thousands of processors began to appear both in the United States and in Japan, setting new computational performance records. By the end of the 20th century, massively parallel supercomputers with thousands of off-the-shelf processors similar to those found in personal computers were constructed and broke through the teraflop computational barrier. Progress in the first decade of the 21st century was dramatic and supercomputers with over 60,000 processors appeared, reaching petaflop performance levels. Beginnings, 1950s and 1960s, the term supercomputing was first used in the New York world in 1929 to refer to large custom-built tabulators that IBM had made for Columbia University. In 1957 a group of engineers left Sperry Corporation to form Control Data Corporation in Minneapolis, MN. Seymour Cray left Sperry a year later to join his colleagues at CDC. In 1960 Cray completed the CDC 1604, one of the first solid-state computers, and the fastest computer in the world at a time when vacuum tubes were found in most large computers. Around 1960 Cray decided to design a computer that would be the fastest in the world by a large margin. After four years of experimentation along with Jim Thornton, and Dean Roosh and about 30 other engineers Cray completed the CDC 6600 in 1964. Cray switched from germanium to silicon transistors, built by Fairchild Semiconductor, but used the planar process. These did not have the drawbacks of the Mesa silicon transistors. He ran them very fast, and the speed of light restriction forced a very compact design with severe overheating problems, which were solved by introducing refrigeration, designed by Dean Roosh. Given that the 6600 outran all computers of the time by about 10 times, it was dubbed a supercomputer and defined the supercomputing market when 100 computers were sold at $8 million each. The 6600 gained speed by farming out work to peripheral computing elements, freeing the CPU to process actual data. The Minnesota Fortran compiler for the machine was developed by Liddard and Minstock at the University of Minnesota and with it the 6600 could sustain 500 kiloflops on standard mathematical operations. In 1968 Cray completed the CDC 7600, again the fastest computer in the world. At 36 MHz, the 7600 had about three and a half times the clock speed of the 6600, but ran significantly faster due to other technical innovations. They only sold about 50 of the 7600s, not quite a failure. Cray left CDC in 1972 to form his own company. Two years after his departure CDC delivered the Star 100 which at 100 megaflops was three times the speed of the 7600. Along with the Texas Instruments ASC, the Star 100 was one of the first machines to use vector processing, the idea having been inspired around 1964 by the APL programming language. In 1956, a team at Manchester University in the United Kingdom began development of Muse a Euro a name derived from microsecond engine a Euro with the aim of eventually building a computer that could operate at processing speeds approaching one microsecond per instruction, about one million instructions per second. Mu is a prefix in the SI and other systems of units denoting a factor of 10 or 6. At the end of 1958 Ferranti agreed to begin to collaborate with Manchester University on the project and the computer was shortly afterwards renamed Atlas, with the joint venture under the control of Tom Kilburn. The first Atlas was officially commissioned on December 7, 1962, nearly three years after the Cray CDC 6600 supercomputer was introduced, as one of the world's first supercomputers, and was considered to be the most powerful computer in England and for a very short time was considered to be one of the most powerful computers in the world, and equivalent to four IBM 7094s. 
it was said that whenever England's Atlas went offline half of the United Kingdom's computer capacity was lost. The Atlas computer pioneered the use of virtual memory and paging as a way to extend the Atlas computer's working memory by combining its 16,000 words of primary core memory with an additional 96,000 words of secondary drum memory. Atlas also pioneered the Atlas supervisor, considered by many to be the first recognizable modern operating system. The Cray era, mid-1970s and 1980s. Four years after leaving CDC, Cray delivered the 80 MHz Cray 1 in 1976, and it became the most successful supercomputer in history. The Cray 1 used integrated circuits with two gates per chip and was a vector processor which introduced a number of innovations such as chaining in which scalar and vector registers generate interim results which can be used immediately, without additional memory references which reduce computational speed. The Cray XMP was released in 1982 as a 105 MHz shared memory parallel vector processor with better chaining support and multiple memory pipelines. All three floating point pipelines on the XMP could operate simultaneously. The Cray 2 released in 1985 was a four processor liquid cooled computer totally immersed in a tank of fluorinet, which bubbled as it operated. It could perform to 1.9 gigalops and was the world's fastest until 1990 when ETA 10G from CDC overtook it. The Cray 2 was a totally new design and did not use chaining and had a high memory latency, but used much pipelining and was ideal for problems that required large amounts of memory. The software costs in developing a supercomputer should not be underestimated, as evidenced by the fact that in the 1980s the cost for software development at Cray came to equal what was spent on hardware. That trend was partly responsible for a move away from the in-house, Cray operating system to Unicos based on Unix. The Cray YMP, also designed by Steve Chen, was released in 1988 as an improvement of the XMP and could have eight vector processors at 167 MHz with a peak performance of 333 megaflops per processor. In the late 1980s, Cray's experiment on the use of gallium arsenide semiconductors in the Cray 3 did not succeed. Cray began to work on a massively parallel computer in the early 1990s, but died in a car accident in 1996 before it could be completed. Cray Research did, however, produce such computers. Massive processing, the 1990s, the Cray 2 which set the frontiers of supercomputing in the mid to late 1980s had only eight processors. In the 1990s, supercomputers with thousands of processors began to appear. Another development at the end of the 1980s was the arrival of Japanese supercomputers, some of which were modeled after the Cray 1. The SX 344 R was announced by NEC Corporation in 1989 and a year later earned the fastest in the world title with a four processor model. However, Fujitsu's numerical wind tunnel supercomputer used 166 vector processors to gain the top spot in 1994. It had a peak speed of 1.7 gigalops per processor. The Hitachi Senior 2201 on the other hand obtained a peak performance of 600 GHz in 1996 by using 2048 processors connected via a fast three-dimensional crossbar network. In the same time frame the Intel Paragon could have 1000 to 4000 Intel i860 processors in various configurations, and was ranked the fastest in the world in 1993. The Paragon was a MIMD machine which connected processors via a high-speed two-dimensional mesh, allowing processors to execute on separate nodes, communicating via the message-passing interface. By 1995 Cray was also shipping massively parallel systems, for example the Cray T3E with over 2,000 processors, using a three-dimensional Torus interconnect. The Paragon architecture soon led to the Intel ASCI Red supercomputer in the United States, which held the top supercomputing spot to the end of the 20th century as part of the Advanced Simulation and Computing Initiative. This was also a mesh-based MIMD massively parallel system with over 9,000 compute nodes and well over 12 terabytes of disk storage, but used off-the-shelf Pentium Pro processors that could be found in everyday personal computers. 
ASCI Red was the first system ever to break through the one teraflop barrier on the MP Linpack benchmark in 1996, eventually reaching two teraflops. Petaflops computing in the 21st century. Significant progress was made in the first decade of the 21st century and it was shown that the power of a large number of small processors can be harnessed to achieve high performance, for example as in System X's use of 1100 Apple Power Mac G5 computers quickly assembled in the summer of 2003 to gain 12.25 teraflops. The efficiency of supercomputers continued to increase, but not dramatically so. The Cray C90 used 500 kilowatts of power in 1991, while by 2003 the ASCIQ used 3000 kilowatts while being 2000 times faster, increasing the performance per watt 300 fold. In 2004 the Earth Simulator supercomputer built by NEC at the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology reached 35.9 teraflops, using 640 nodes each with eight proprietary vector processing chips. The IBM Blue Jeans supercomputer architecture found widespread use in the early part of the 21st century, and 27 of the computers on the TOP500 list used that architecture. The Blue Jean approach is somewhat different in that it trades processor speed for low power consumption so that a larger number of processors can be used at air-cooled temperatures. It can use over 60,000 processors, with 2048 processors per rack, and connects them via a three dimensional torus interconnect. Progress in China has been rapid, in that China placed 51st on the TOP500 list in June 2003, then 14th in November 2003, and 10th in June 2004, and then 5th during 2005, before gaining the top spot in 2010 with the 2.5 petaflop Diani I supercomputer. In July 2011 the 8.1 petaflop Japanese K computer became the fastest in the world using over 60,000 commercial scalar SPARC 64 VI processors housed in over 600 cabinets. The fact that K computer is over 60 times faster than the Earth simulator, and that the Earth simulator ranks as the 68th system in the world seven years after holding the top spot demonstrates both the rapid increase in top performance and the widespread growth of supercomputing technology worldwide. Historical TOP500 Table This is a list of the computers which appeared at the top of the top 500 list since 1993. The peak speed is given as the RMAX rating. Export controls, the COCOM and its later replacement, the WASANAR arrangement, legally regulated, required licensing and approval and record keeping. Or banned entirely, the export of high performance computers to certain countries. Such controls have become harder to justify, leading to loosening of these regulations. Some have argued these regulations were never justified. See also, LINPAC, TOP500, Green500, FLOPS, Instructions Per Second, Quasi-Opportunistic Supercomputing, Supercomputer Architecture, Supercomputing in China, Supercomputing in Europe, Supercomputing in India, Supercomputing in Japan, Supercomputing in Pakistan. References <laughs>